All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of G-Team Outdoors. Today we're gonna be going over my rig for the 2025 season. All right, guys, so first and foremost, this is my 2024 Skeeter ZXR21. Uh, been on this boat for about a month already, and I love it. Super stable and fast. Handles the big water of Pyramid and Castaic so far uh, really, really well. So I'm really excited to run this boat this year. Uh, but for the actual components that we're running this year, we're going to start off on the bow, running the new Minn Kota Quest. Uh, so far, I love this thing. Super accurate with live scope. I mean, you could... You could turn this thing on a dime and it's extremely fast. I mean, super fast. Attached to the trolley motor, we are running the Hummingbird Mega 360 along with the LVS 34 transducer by Garmin. As you guys may know, I love live scope and I'm always going to have uh, have it on my boat if it's allowed. Put on the 360 this year just to help uh, find isolated brush and rock piles. And then we'll just go check it with live scope. The elephant in the room, this guy right here, the MBT-22 Battleship. This thing is a monster. The video does not do it justice. In person, this thing is huge. And it's, I mean, it's a beast. Uh, you're able to pick any little detail out on live scope now. I'm also running the Hummingbird Helix 12 right here for the Mega 360 and mapping if I need it. But with these two combos right here, I should be able to see any isolated cover or rock piles with this guy and check it with this bad boy right here. Holding these things down and keeping uh, the graphs on the boat, I'm running a Bass Boat Technologies mount on the bow and on the dash. I'll show you guys the dash a little bit later. But I needed something that could handle the rough waves and not lose this investment we have right here. This is a monster graph and it's heavy. Um, and we needed something that wasn't gonna move. So this thing being uh, as solid as it is, I'm super stoked and uh, very excited to run it this year. So we're done with the electronics on the bow. Another thing that I love about this boat is the padded deck and how enormous this thing is. I literally could fit 10 rods on this side, 10 rods on that side and still have enough uh, room to move around. So that's gonna be a big player in this upcoming year. Let's uh, continue into the storage units. Talking about the storage unit, I got two enormous rod lockers right here. I'm gonna be able to fill them to the brim with all my eye rods. It doesn't have the tubes in the front, which I love. I think the rods are gonna be able to fit in there easier and I'm gonna be able to fit more rods in here. Uh, for the center, I'm most likely gonna put all my tackle in here. Um, wow. So it's got a ton of room. Skeeter already put some segmented holders in here for 12 tackle boxes. There's nothing in here yet. Um, I'm sure it's gonna be filled with all my Sakamata shads and Robo worms. I could also put rods in here if I needed to, uh, but for the most part, I think the center of the boat, I'm just gonna keep for the plastics and all my lead or tungsten. And like I said, on this side, I could still put a ton of eye, rod in, eye rods in here. Um, it does come with this little like bin area. I got my registration and my fire extinguisher sitting in here right now. But also in this box or rod locker, I have my GLS 10 black box for my Garmin. And I just put it in there. I thought it was a good idea because it's easier to access. And if I need to mess with the wiring or the black box goes south, uh, we could take it out, swap it out and put a new one in there. So that is it for the storage compartments. A ton of storage. I'm super stoked with how open the compartments are. And uh, we're gonna talk about the captain seat now and what electronics I'm running on the dash. I actually forgot about this nice, cool little feature that Skeeter puts in their boat, a little trash can area with a, a DC port in there so you could charge any of your stuff like cameras, drones. For me, it's gonna be GoPros, um, just to keep our resources clean and not throw your braid back in the water. You could put it in here. Along with the, the Skeeter ruler, hopefully we don't need this and we're catching all 19s, but if we do need to measure a 14 inch bass to make sure it's legal to bring into in, we got it right here. Now let's get into the captain's seat and talk about the electronics on the dash. So we'll start right here on the left-hand side. I'm running the Garmin 8612. Mainly for the live scope, because you have to mirror the MBT-22 off of this. But during practice, when I'm idling around, this is going to be acting as my mapping unit. The maps that the 8612 has are great. 
And uh, right here we are running the Hummingbird Helix 12, just like the front, but this guy's gonna be here for the down scan and the side scan. I think the side scan that Hummingbird has is second to none. And uh, this bad boy is gonna be basically on side scan the whole time we're idling around mapping out the lake. I got both of these, just like the front, uh, mounted on a Bass Boat Technologies dash mount. Uh, super stable, like I said. I needed something that I could I could run through rough water and not have to worry about my graft. The last thing you want to do is have worries about your equipment, and uh, this will help me just keep my focus on finding the fish and getting them to bite. Down here on the steering wheel, we do have the Pro Trim blinker switches for my trim and my jack plate. I do have an Atlas jack plate. We'll talk about that later, um, and that's just easier. For uh, handling rough water, you could just hit it with your fingertips, just like a blinker while driving your car. Along with, to help with safety and maneuverability and rough water is the hot foot. So now instead of having only one hand on the steering wheel at one time, we got the hot foot, could have two points of contact on the steering wheel and just control the, the gas by just pressing down on the gas, basically pedal to the metal. That's basically it for the cockpit captain's chair. So let's uh, continue on back to the rear of the boat and show you guys what we got powered this thing. All right, guys, really quick. Skeeter has an enormous ice chest right here. We're going to be able to carry a ton of waters, gatos, lunch, and ice for those hot summer days when we got to be icing our live well. So just want to let you guys know that this thing's huge. All right, guys, so that's basically what we have on the dash. Let's continue on the tour and show you what else we have on the boat. Now we're at the live wells. Pretty basic. I do like how it's not a giant opening. It's got this, this little opening to put fish in there just so during rough water it doesn't fly out. Or when you're calling, they don't jump out of the live well because I've had that happen to me before. In the live well, there is an oxygenator uh, to help just oxygenate the water, keep it moving, keep those fish healthy so you don't weigh in any dead fish. And right here behind the passenger chair and behind the captain's chair we do have a bunch of storage right here this is where i'll just keep my extra rain gear and then uh, my co-angler will be able to put basically whatever he wants in that one so now at the heart of the boat minus where the motor is i mean that i guess could be the heart of the boat but what makes the boat go and powers it all day are my dakota lithium batteries i've been with dakota for a, i don't even know like four or five years now and i mean their batteries have never let me down knock on wood uh, I love their batteries. They'll keep me powered all day. So for my electronics, just solely my electronics, I have a 12 volt, 320 amp power connected to basically everything accessory wise. And then running my actual motor, I have a 12 volt, 135 amp power, which I, I will never kill that battery. The alternator on this Yamaha is a great alternator and it's huge. It'll charge the basically the whole boat out. I've ran, I mean, basically like 12 hours and my batteries were maybe at like 75%. So love that. Powering the Quest on the bow, I have two 36 volt, 60 amp hour Dakota Lithiums right here. Uh, the reason I went with two, you could do one, but just in case one of them goes out, I'll still have a second battery to be able to fish the rest of the day. I have a thousand percent trust in these batteries, but just in case I'll have a backup battery. Uh, they are ran together right now, so I'm never going to kill this setup. But yeah, I know. I trust Dakota Lithium fully with powering the boat. And uh, yeah, if you guys need batteries, hit up Dakota Lithium. All right, guys. So hopefully you guys are enjoying the video. We're coming to the end right here. But the heart of the boat right here is the Yamaha VMAX SHO. Uh, 250 horsepower. I mean, this thing is a beast. It sounds amazing. And Yamaha, I heard, is the most reliable engine out there. So we went with Yamaha this year. Also, next to the engine, we're running the Minn Kota Raptors. Uh, these are the eight footers. And uh, yeah, so bed fishing, shallow water fishing, these things are gonna come into play for sure. All right, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time on Teaching Outdoors.